Welcome back to the 150K Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Graham, where we take your dreams to six figures and beyond. Today, I have Kelly Edwards, the host of the Business Shower Podcast. She's also a real estate expert and does a whole bunch of other stuff from credit repair and some other things we're going to get into. But Kelly, we're kind of like on a first date here. We've, we've met in the past a little bit, but yeah. we don't know each other too well yet. Tell us a little bit about yourself and you know what you're doing and where you're going. Yes. Yeah, so, um, yes, I am a real estate investor. <clears throat> I'm also the owner of the business shower, which is a podcast and the events management, um, space, um, where I'm going, I'm going to the top, Joe, yes. I'm going to the top all the way to the top and I'm not going to turn around. <laughs> That's <laughs> gotcha. where I'm going. And I can't wait to get there. Perfect. So how did you get into, because I know you're an entrepreneur, you do podcasting, you have the real estate and all. Have you been in like the entrepreneurial space since you started or did you like fall into it? Yes. Yeah, so not really fall into it. So I had my first business back in 2011, I believe I want to say I had my first business didn't work out, had it with an ex, which was not a good idea. Um, it didn't work out. So we ended up shutting that business down. That was a talent management company, mm -hmm. um, for like models and artists and different things like that. I enjoyed that. Um, but it's not where my passion was. Um, so got back into the workforce, uh, started working with a really big payroll company was there for 13 years. And then, uh, February, 2020, I got laid off. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, fight or flight, what do you want to do? And I was just like, well, I'm a fight. So I decided to go, I had already started my businesses because you know how you have that moment and you're like, they're going to do something crazy. I'm going to get laid off. I'm mm -hmm. going to get demoted. Something's going to happen. Yep. So I was already focusing on my businesses. Um, and when they laid me off, it was just like, all right, I'm just going to run with it. And that's what I did. Um, I recently returned back to, um, return back to my full-time job because it's very hard to get funding in your real estate business without a W2 behind you to back you up. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. so I needed that. So that's why I returned back to the workforce. Um, but I'm working with the company that she's very supportive of what you have going outside of your your, you know, your, per, your job, as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do here, she mm -hmm. doesn't, she's very supportive of what you're doing outside. So, um, that's where I am right now. I'm here and I'm just trying to take it to the top. And now that the end of the year is coming, I have some things that I wanted to do last year that I didn't get a chance to do, uh, because a lot of things was holding me back. But now that those things are checked off, I can officially go hard. No, that I love that. And, and it's actually you're doing something. I read this online today. I don't know if you know who Dan Fleshman is. He owns like a crap ton of businesses, big like serial, what you would call serial entrepreneur. And he's been saying this even to people that are just doing startups or businesses or whatever. Have your day job, have a side job so that you can take all the money that you're making in your business and reinvest it. You and I are on the same page. I started my business in May. I do sales coaching. And I have the podcast and do stuff like that. But I still do my regular day job as well. So I can cover the bills and then just take the money and reinvest it. So that's smart. I, I yes. commend you on that. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that's got to be a little bit hard because yes. most entrepreneurs I know don't, and this is a good thing, not a bad thing. They don't like having to listen to someone, tell them what to do or direct oh. them. <laughs> have, have you run into that? And oh, I mean, I know I have, but I'm laughing. I'm <laughs> laughing because it happened to me today. Like, you know, and hopefully nobody listens to this, but if they do, I'm sure they understand. I hate being told what to do. And today I had a situation where they wanted to coach me and tell me what to do. And I almost flipped the lid. Like I was just like, I don't like this. I don't like people telling me what to do. It's like a, it's like a pet peeve of mine. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, it's, it's very hard. It's very hard to kind of like not put yourself in a bucket, but 
take direction when in your business, you have your own employees. Like I have my own employees that work for me. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, now I'm coming here and I'm taking direction from someone else. It sometimes it gets under my skin and then sometimes I can let it go. So I, yeah, it it happened to me today. (laughs) (laughs) I get that. I get that. The nice thing with mine right now is because I'm in sales and I'm like a top producer. Mm -hmm. My manager mostly leaves me alone. There's some certain data entry stuff. He's like, Joe, I need you to do this. I have to have this for reports. Besides that, I can run my day. So that's kind of how I, uh, like you, I, I can handle it, but I don't really like that no. um, thing. But you said you have some big things coming. So uh, what, what are your like future goals coming up or what, what do you have coming down the pipe? Because you intrigued me when you said that. Yeah. So I will be launching um, our e-commerce page um, soon. I will also be, now that we are officially a trademark, I'm going to be offering um, kind of like a, a, how can I put this in a way, a, a franchise mm-hmm. option for the business shower. Um, the events part of it, I'm going to be offering um, the franchising part of that. And then um, what else do I have coming up? Oh, I have a really big event that I'm planning. Okay. For uh, 2023, it's not going to happen until 2023, but it's a really big event. Um, it's going to be um, geared towards a lot of Black-owned business owners, mm-hmm. um, and it's gonna it's gonna be big. So I'm like so excited about all of the stuff that I have coming up right now. No, that's awesome. So I'm gonna pick apart that a little bit and kind of just dig right. a little bit more on you. So you're gonna be franchising the business shower event part. So what type of events are you doing? Cause I'm sure you perk some people's interest with that because we've been stuck inside for a long time and people are finally starting to get out. So yes, events are cool. Yeah. So I'm going to be from franchising the events part of it. So, um, with the, with the events, I do mainly seminars for new and existing business owners, just to kind of learn and then network. Um, so almost like a soft launch party for a business owner. Oh, cool. Um, and because now that, you know, this phrase, the business shower is trademark, it's mine. It belongs to me. Um, I still want to give people that opportunity to be able to have a business shower and not receive any legal paperwork from me. Mm-hmm. So, um, I plan on, uh, franchising and, and also expanding my business, um, in different markets with that. Cool. So that would be like, say I started, I'm just going to throw out something here. Say I started a business here in Dallas, Fort Worth, where I live, yes. and I wanted to get a bunch of people together and, and use your trademark. I could franchise it with you, have a networking event, and then just use the name and trademarks of that. Okay, cool. Exactly. Got that. So the next thing you said, 2023, and I like this, that you're planning it out. You're going to have a really big event focused on more on uh, black business owners. Mm-hmm. And is that going to be like celebrating them or what is, can you give us any details on that? Or is that like hush, hush, you can't say anything. (laughs) Not hush, hush, but I can give you some details. Yes. It's going to be celebrating them. Um, and it's going to be a big event. I'm going to have all types of businesses there. I want to have artists. I want to have, um, different designers. I want to have, um, different vendors. So I want to have a lot of different, um, uh, black owned uh, businesses that are going to be there. And the mm-hmm. reason for this is because, you know, the climate of what's going on right now um, with um, Black Lives Matter. And then also, this is, there's nothing like this going on in New Jersey. I see it in New York. Mm-hmm. I see it in Los Angeles. So I'm like, all right, what about Jersey? I live in Jersey. So that's why I want to be that voice for Jersey. I got you. And, and networking is huge because the more yes. you connect with the right people that have the same vision, the same plan, the more you can level up and do that. So this leads me to my next call, my next question, because thinking about this, I'm like, I'm, I'm from the country. I don't understand certain cultural things the same way. How is it being a, um, what, have you had any struggles or like walls you've run into coming up being an African-American business owner? Mm-hmm. In, in the in Jersey, maybe. Okay. I don't know. Like at different parts of the world are different. So <laughs> tell us a little bit about that. Like the struggles you may have had Ooh. and it doesn't have, it could be just being a woman too, 
because mm-hmm. like there are a lot of up and coming women that are doing great, but you know, that we've been breaking like the glass ceilings for a while and it still needs to, you know, get broke. Exactly. So, um, it's very hard, um, especially in the real estate market. I feel like in, uh, you know, even, even some of with, uh, with my podcast and, um, also the events management, it's kind of hard as well. Um, because, Real estate is a Caucasian male dominated industry. I'm going to say that. Um, A lot of the people that I even look up to um, are dominating that industry. Um, And women are not really dominating that industry. There's a lot of men that are dominating that industry. So it's very hard to get your voice out there. You almost have to be very aggressive to get your voice out there. And I'm a fire sign. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to get my voice out there. I'm a fire (laughs) sign too. You're going to listen to me. (laughs) (laughs) And that's, that's kind of, that's kind of where I am um, when it comes to that. So it, it is very hard, but what I would say to any female, because it's, it's hard for all women. It's not just black women, it's all women. Um, because it's such a male driven industry and, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're supposed to be the providers and, you know, the ones that take care of home, what are you doing in sales? It's like, it's almost like that kind of, um, thing, but you know, I feel like I use my nurturing approach when it comes to speaking with sellers and it helps mm-hmm. me a lot. So yeah. I'm not so aggressive. They're like, oh, it's a woman I'm talking to. And then when I'm speaking to a woman, they understand. So it it's hard. It has some benefits, but it is hard. You just have to, you know, if for all my Leos out there, just raw, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm in Aries, of course. I don't follow it much, but I'm in Aries. I'm a fire sign. But yeah. what I have noticed in my past 15 years of sales is you're right. It has been a male-dominated industry but it's starting to change. And the women that I've seen coming in, actually mm-hmm. a lot of times outsell the men and are better because they have the empathy and the aggression. Because a lot of guys, we have the aggression. I, I mean, I actually have both. I can do it really well. That's mm-hmm. kind of like when you said the empathy thing, all over it, like yes. connecting that. That's how I make money. Like I do. But mm-hmm. like, I've seen so many, like even in oil and gas, like I used to sell oil and gas sales. Now you got to mm-hmm. thank you. Oil and gas sales is the top 5%. Mm-hmm. And it's, in lack of better terms, good old country boys, because oil and gas, it leans to the right. Not to be, mm-hmm. that's just how that goes. Mm-hmm. I would see women come in and they would just kill it mm-hmm. because the guy first wanted to, to hear a nice voice because let's be honest, they're going to listen to me or a nice female voice. They're going to do that. And then mm-hmm. just smooth. And yeah, so sky is the limit with that. I agree. Yes. You have to push through, but once you get it down, mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's cool. Like, I I like that. Um, (laughs) So let's just move forward from there a little bit. Okay. With doing business, with doing sales, what are some key things? um, And I've had some female entrepreneurs on, but a lot of them were like on marketing or food. They were like really niche. You're more doing different businesses. What would you tell like my viewers out there that are females and males as well, but from your perspective on what to do with entrepreneurship or how to get into it or what books would you recommend? Just give them a little bit of insight, I guess is what I'm asking. Yeah. So as far as what to do with it, one thing you don't want to do, and I'm struggling with this now is be hard on yourself. Um, That's one of the main things. Like you're not always going to win. Um, entrepreneurship is a very tough road. I don't Mm -hmm. know if anybody has read rich dad, poor dad. Yep. Um, but he worked for free a lot (laughs) before he really started making money. So if you go into your business with, I'm going to make 500 grand in two weeks, that's the wrong mindset to have. Yes. Be that motivated. You do want to make money in your business. I'm not telling you that you're going to, you should be working your business for free, but you don't want that to be your reason for starting a business. You want your reason to be, I don't want to work for anybody else. I want to call the shots in my business. So, um, that's kind of what, that's kind of what I would say to them. Um, books that I've read, I've read rich dad, poor dad. I've read the 48 powers of law. Oh, that's a good I've book. Re- yes. I've Robert read Green. the law of attraction. Yep. I've read, I'm trying to think I have so many books. I don't even know what books I have over there. Um, 
I'm going to say that's it for right now. Cause I've, oh, no, I've that's read fine. some other books, but I can't think of them all right now. <laughs> yeah, if they get started on those, it's good. Like the first sales yes. book I ever read was rich dad, poor dad. Mm-hmm. I listened to Robert green and read his stuff and the mental games that he plays in a good Ooh. way are phenomenal law of attractions important i'm actually just i'm halfway through winning by tim grover uh mm-hmm. he was the trainer for michael jordan that that yes. book is lights out mm-hmm. um i really liked i read a lot like i won't yeah. go on my list because like if you <laughs> well, follow you know social i'm always p- promoting books yeah so one more book that i want to recommend the four hour work week yep that was a that was a good one that was a good one so what was your, what was your biggest takeaway that was tim ferris right yes um that I, <laughs> in my brain, I feel like I have to work for 12 hours to get things done. And I really don't. Nope. So for yep. me, it was just the, or the whole organization part of it for me was, was like mind blowing. I was just like, what, what really Kelly? So now I wake up at like 5. AM in the morning and I get a lot of stuff done in between that time. Literally I have like a four hour time frame, and I get a lot of stuff done. So. No, that's awesome. Now I don't get up at five. I get up at six and I do some of my stuff that I don't like getting up, but I, I, I do love I, it. Oh, well, see you and probably a morning person. And I actually like, I do my workouts in the afternoon. I do a lot of my writing, my stuff. I'm more of a night owl. It's just how I am. But I do get up because, you know, it's the only time it's quiet mm-hmm. with Tim Ferriss's book though. And I think a lot of people get this confused that four mm-hmm. hour work week he's just talking about condensing time and being 100 percent in the moment because we get so distracted and, mm-hmm. I, and also yeah that's a great book yeah <laughs> oh sorry like i said i've been having the allergy crazy thing going on it's going around like i just got over a really bad sinus infection so i understand <laughs> I got you. So let's talk about your podcast a little bit. The business shower podcast. Mm -hmm. How many episodes are you guys at with that one now? We are 24 episodes. Currently we have another one coming out 25 episodes on the 15th. Well, congratulations because if you make it past 13th and I learned this from Zach Babcock, not me. I didn't come up with it. He's the one who told me it. If you do 13 or more, you're in the top 10% of podcasters because most people stop 13 or less. Ooh, so you're okay. already in the top 10% because okay. you're doing more. Consistency is amazing. Yay. So tell us a little bit more about what your podcast is about and, and, and what you're trying to do with that. Yeah. So my podcast is more of a platform for business owners to come up there and speak about their journey on how they got started in the pot, how they got started in their business, um, whatever that business is, and um, kind of some tips and tricks to help the next business owner or the next entrepreneur go and um, pursue their business. So pretty much I've had every type of business owner on my podcast so far even though we're only at 25 episodes I feel like I've had artists I had uh professional painters I've had um podcasters you know I've had uh clothing designers so business coaches I've had a lot of people come on my show um so whatever and that's the type of service I want to provide whatever business you want to pursue I have interviewed someone that can help you and inspire you to pursue this business which is awesome and we're not done but I always do this in the middle because I just like to mm-hmm. Tell people besides the Business Shower podcast, which I'm assuming they can find in like Apple, Spotify and all the yes. major things, where else can people reach you or find you? Yes. Yeah, so um, you can go to the website, which is www.thebusinessshowerevents.com. Um, you can find us on Facebook at the Business Shower Events. You can also find us on Instagram at the same handle, the Business Shower Events. Um, and we actually just added uh, Twitter and LinkedIn as a new profile, same at the Business Shower Events. Nice. That's awesome. I think like our podcast aligned. So you're going to be episode 43. And you're going to come up. Yeah. 43. So I've been, I've been popping two a week. So I do a guest on Tuesdays Mm -hmm. and then on Fridays I do like sales or mindset stuff like that. But same thing. I've had people that have done email marketing, they have done own businesses, they have Mm -hmm. done, you name it. Um, Yeah. It's just, it's podcasters, that type of stuff, but just finding different ways to help them break the 150 K barrier or the hundred K barrier. I call it 150 K because pretty much if you can get over a hundred, you can, be okay. If you get over 150, you can breathe and start to do what you want. 
So that's kind of like what I'm trying to do and show people different ways to do it, which makes sense. And I love that. Like we talked about that when you came on my show and I was just like, oh. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. And and it's so crazy because I found out 58,000, I think is the median average income in the U.S., Mm-hmm. and that's hard to live off of. And no offense, I've been there. Look, I've been on food stamps. I've mm-hmm. had to do two to three jobs at one point. So there's no mm-hmm. judgment there. Yeah. Kelly and I are just saying, hey, there's a way to get out of there, you know, yes. and to level it's- up. That That's kind of what we're saying here. Exactly, exactly. And d- no matter what type of um, industry you want to pursue, there's always a, a way to get around that. And I am a firm believer in you don't want to, always rely on your nine to five because in this market and you know, we're still in a pandemic. So yep. our nine to fives are not promised. Yeah. Well, yeah. And you want to be adaptable and be able to do what you need to do. And exactly. if you have an entrepreneurial bug, you will eventually not be able to just be in corporate America. It won't work for you. It just no. won't work for you. <laughs> not for the long haul. <laughs> no, no. So I have this fun question. I always like to ask people, and if you've heard it, my podcast for you may have caught it. Um, I don't do it on every episode, but I do it on some and you get to get to this question. You can go back in time as far as you want mm. or in forward in time as far as you want. You mm. get to stay for one year mm-hmm. and you get to talk with one person and learn anything you want from them and then come back to today. Mm. Where would you go and what would you learn? Mm. This is a good question go back in time. Mm. See, everyone is, everyone currently that I want to talk to, um, is, I'm not going to say they're in my network, but I could reach them if I need to. Um, but I would go, I would literally go back in time and I would, honestly, I would talk to myself. Um, and I would say, listen, self, you know, because I I came into a lot of money in my, I'm going to say my 19 year old, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, my teen era, Yep. that 19 to 21 year old. And I I probably would tell her, you need to invest in real estate now. Um, And you need to start in your real estate. Um, And I would tell her that, you know, don't listen to what others are saying you need to get into real estate. I am your future self. And I say that you should do this because this is what you're going to be doing eventually anyway. Um, and I would definitely do that just to change my, my outcome now. And I I wonder how well that would, would work. That's actually a really good question. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Well, and it's crazy because then if you did that and you could see it, you know, go across your life and, like, like now you would start investing in real estate later than 19, I'm assuming. So yeah. if you'd have done it when you're 19, you'd probably be father where you are. But yes. the little kicker that I always remind people of is if you did, would you be the person you are now? Or would you be way different? That's mm. the kicker about going back in time. I, I like probably, it. Yeah. I like it, but it's like one of those, would I still be the same person? I don't know. Hardly no one Hardly. goes into the future, by the way. Mm-hmm. Like I've had one person say they wanted to go into the future to see their future self. Most Mm -hmm. people, once they really think about it, are like, I want to go back and talk to myself. And I think that's because all of us have dealt with crap, Mm -hmm. you know, stuff in the past or mistakes or stuff we wish we could have changed. And we're like, if I could have went back and said this, but I'm thinking, but would I be the person I am? That's kind of like the little brain thing I have in my head. (laughs) I mean, honestly, I coming and think about it. I would like to see what my future holds just to see, like to peek inside, you know, see what's going on. Oh, okay. Oh, she's, she lives in a mansion. Oh, by the beach. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Check. Okay. Keep going. (laughs) Yes. I would definitely love to do that. (laughs) Yeah. I have never, like I've asked this question, probably I've done 43 episodes and I probably Mm -hmm. asked this 20 sometimes, mm. but I've never really answered it myself yet. I still keep just thinking about it. It's probably because I got this weird thought in my head. I'm thinking about what would I do? That's why I keep asking other people. Mm. So what would you do? Now I'm going to put you on a spot. Would you mm. go forward or would you go backwards? Mm. 
If I go forward, I'm going to go way past now into like space age because I'm like a Star Trek nerd sci-fi person. So I want to go and see. I don't care about me because I know I can set my stuff up. I do care kind of, but I want to see how the future generations would be. Like, mm. that's why I like Star Trek, because mm-hmm. it's the only like sci-fi weird one that involves Earth where we did it right. Everything else, the Earth's blowing up or dying and only a little small group in mm-hmm. in Star Trek. They make a bunch of mistakes because they're human, mm-hmm. but they keep getting better. So mm-hmm. if like, you know, say three, four thousand years in the future, we're mm-hmm. in space and we're doing good. And I think I'd want to do that. Mm. We don't even I, have to learn anything. I think I would just want to see it. Okay. I don't I don't think I've ever watched Star Trek. I'm a Marvel fan. Mm-hmm. So Oh, I love Marvel. I do love oh. Marvel. Okay. You know, but like even in Marvel, like they like the Avengers, the world's about the end. All the different mm-hmm. Marvel movies were on the brink of dying, and then the heroes save the day, which is great. I love that stuff. You know, mm-hmm. it makes me happy. Yes. Star Trek isn't that way. It just it just yeah. keeps getting better and better. Mm-hmm. There's still issues, but it's not like the world's gonna end. That's really yeah. different. Okay. I gotta so, get into it. I never watched it. So what is your favorite Marvel movie? Oh, Avengers Endgame. That was oh, like my favorite. I, I still watch I still watch it and I still am like, oh my God, this is so sad. Yeah. We lost three people. Like three people. Everybody is like, oh, only you know, Black Widow died and um Tony Stark, but no, that was the end of Captain America too. Yep. So like what are we going to do? Like, what are we going to do? <laughs> yeah, it's it's wild how well they, they do that. How mm-hmm. well they pull you in mm-hmm. and all the characters. And you're just like, like I cried. I, I, I'll, I'll admit, I cried when they started disappearing and I see all the different ones disappear. And then, mm-hmm. uh, what was it? Spider-Man hugs Tony and he goes, mm-hmm. Shh, and I'm like, oh. and then at the end, I knew Tony was going to die. You knew that he was going to go out in a bang, but I was like, oh. I I had a feeling, but I didn't want it to happen. And I definitely did not want to lose Captain America. But um, you kind of saw it like you did, like you kind of saw it happening. And I was just like, are you kidding me? And I mean, I've been catch, ca- uh, catching up. I didn't really like Black Widow that often. I mean, I didn't like it that much. I mm-hmm. just I watched it. I, it was OK, yeah. um, but I didn't like it. I did love um the new episode with uh scarlet the witch oh wandavision um, yeah when wandavision i did like that um i've not seen loki and i've only seen part of falcon and winter soldier i just got busy this summer i they're on my list i want to see them so that's why i said that before you told me anything please don't tell me anything on those i'm not gonna tell you anything but you also need to watch what if yeah because it puts in perspective with Mm -hmm what could have happened and i'm gonna tell you three four and five just skip that um but watch the rest of them (laughs) yeah no i'm on the list my daughter is a huge uh marvel fan and she's Ah. chomping at the bit she's 19 she's chomping at the bit to tell me about the different stuff so Mm -hmm. like we've talked about wandavision all the other ones but i won't Mm -hmm. let her tell me about falcon and winter soldier Mm-mm. even though she keeps trying to slip up I'm like no let me watch it and then yes, like Loki, i always love loki like i'm into like norse mythology and all mm-hmm. that crazy stuff see entrepreneurs we have interesting thing we don't just do business we do no, self-care we like marvel movies yeah so exactly. that leads me into my my next question what do you do for self-care is it part of your regiment do you need to do more self-care because i've run into a lot of entrepreneurs that either are good at this or they're not, or they're learning. I'm in the learning where I'm going back and forth where sometimes I'm good and sometimes I'm not. Yes. So I need to get better at it. Um, I don't do a lot of self-care. I am always running. I am always on the go and I need to do more self-care. Um, and my body has a way of, because of my recent diagnosis with lupus, if I don't take a break, I will get really sick mm-hmm. and that will be, a, then I'm laying down watching Marvel movies over and over and over because I can't do, I have no energy to do anything else. And that's how I felt over the weekend. I was very sick um, because I kept going. So yes, I need to do more self-care. I need to have more downtime. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm learning. I need to start meditating more. I need to start practicing my affirmations more. Um, 
there's a lot of changes that's going to be coming with me in the next couple of months. So. No, and that's good because you had to first get to that point. Like mm -hmm. I, like I said, when we talked on your show, I believe, like I started everything in May. So I've always been the big sales guy. I've always been the go, 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 do whatever. And then I could come home and do the thing. Well, now with the business and all, I literally have to have, as my friend George Ryan says, tight containers. I have to literally be like, okay, I'm going to work in my business for one hour. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this for one hour. I'm like last night I slowed down and I played a video game called Overwatch. I like played two games. It took me like a half hour, but it was just enough to let my mind just. Mm -hmm. Because we're our secret weapon. That's the thing I think a lot of entrepreneurs don't realize. Mm -hmm. We're the secret sauce. Success is boring. You can lay it out, mm -hmm. but you're the key to your business. You're the key to what you're doing. Exactly. But yeah, you definitely got to take care of yourself. Meditation is yes. hard for me. I have to, I do walking meditation. Mm -hmm. Like just sitting still is not my game. Yeah. I can make myself do it, but it's not my game. <laughs> I've only mastered five minutes. I'm, I'm still at five. Oh, minutes, no, I'm with so. you. I got up to eight once. Once okay. I timed myself and I had to do it with the timer. Most mm -hmm. of the time it's like two minutes here, one minute mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, I started doing some breath work too. That's kind of fun. Okay. Yeah, I got to try that. But no, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it to 10 minutes, but I can't because my mind is like, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> yep. no, I got you. So let's do this. Mm -hmm. What other pieces of advice, because we talked a lot about a lot of stuff here. What other pieces of advice would you give to entrepreneurs in general or words of this and say, you know, you're sitting down with someone that you really care about and you love and they're saying, I'm going to be an entrepreneur, Kelly. You've been successful at it help me. What do I need to do? Mm -hmm. Well, what would I tell them to do? Um, research. So you want to research your business before you start. Um, depending on the type of business you're getting into, credit is very important. Um, business credit is especially important. Um, your personal credit will be used and it sucks to say this. There's ways you can get around this. It is. Um, but your personal credit sometimes is used as a, like a guarantee for your business credit. So, um, if you can keep your credit score up to part, please do that. Um, what are some other things? I'm just thinking of the lessons that I learned. Um, and just stay consistent, no matter what you're going through, no matter what's going on, stay consistent. And you never want to be the smartest person in the room. Um, you should be in a room with other smart people. So mm -hmm. make sure you surround yourself with like-minded individuals that are where you want to be. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. That is awesome. Any other party world words for our, our listeners today? No, just you guys got this. I'm just going to give you some inspirational words. You got this. You can do it and keep at it. Awesome. Thank you again, Kelly, for being on my podcast. I really appreciate you. Thank you for having me on yours as well. Yes. Um, and everyone who's been listening, thank you again for listening to the 150K podcast, where we take your dreams to six figures and beyond. Like Kelly said, be consistent, keep going forward. It doesn't matter your race, background anything like that, chase your dreams, catch your dreams, go after them with everything you are, and you'll be so much farther along and happier. And until next time, keep rocking it. Bye. Bye.